Hello guys, Dan back again. Now, if you're a regular subscriber to my channel, and if you're not, why not? Get it sorted out. You know that recently I've been doing a little series on how to play your favourite old school games on your original hardware. Now, if your old school system of choice was a CD-based system, for example, you know, the um, Sega Mega Drive, uh, Mega CD, um, or maybe the 3DO, or the Amiga CD32, or the Dreamcast, it's really simple with those. You basically download the ISO files, burn them to a CD-ROM and play them. You know, a lot of these old systems didn't even have any copy protection on. The problem comes when your favourite old school system was a cartridge-based machine, which many of them were back then. Now, recently I've done videos on how to play your favourite old school games of SD card on uh, systems like the Mega Drive and the Nintendo 64. Today, I'm going to be concentrating on the 16-bit legend that is the Super Nintendo. So if you weren't a Mega Drive fan back in the day, chances were that this was your uh, system of choice back in the early 90s. Now, I never actually owned a SNES back in the uh, early 90s, but my friend Martin at school did. And I remember we'd have, you know, many nights around his place playing games like, you know, Zelda or Link to the Past and uh, the original Mario Kart, uh, Donkey Kong Country, another favourite back in the day. And uh, the thing is, if you look on eBay for the original cartridges, I've actually seen originals go for the same price, if not more, than you would have paid for them in the shops back in like 1993. So uh, maybe you're like me and you're not really, you know, a, a game collector as such, you know, if you haven't got wall-to-wall -wall cartridges and CDs around your place. Uh, literally all you want to do is experience the original games on the original hardware, then the best solution would be a flash cart. Now I've got to say a massive thank you to the guys at retrotowers.co.uk uh, for supplying me with a super Everdrive for this video. Now, if you're not familiar with how an Everdrive works, pretty simple really. Now you get a circuit board that's in an original Super Nintendo cartridge, and in the top, top of it there's actually a hole that's been cut out that you can insert an SD card into. So what you do is, um, the operating system is actually stored on the SD card, you download it on a PC, and that's really good because it means that the operating system on your card can be updated in the future. Um, and then you store all of your games as ROMs onto here, so you put the SD card in the top, you place this into your Super Nintendo, like you would any other cartridge, in the top there. And then, when the machine loads up, it will present you with a menu that you can select the ROM that you'd like to play from. And uh, then it basically loads the, uh, the ROM file from the SD card, places it in the memory of the cartridge, and then, from then on, basically the SNES will see it like um, any other game. So what I'll do is I'll give you a little demonstration of um, installing the operating system and getting ROMs onto it and give you a, a little demo on basically playing the games on an original SNES. I'll walk you through it, it's really simple. So we'll hop over to the PC and then uh, we'll get started. All right, now the first thing that you need to do when you hop onto your PC is insert and format your SD card if it's not formatted already. Now, uh, you need to give it a title. I formatted mine in FAT32 format, and I've called it SNES um, because I've actually got a few of these EverDrives and a lot of SD cards hanging around, and it's handy to know which one is which, so uh, you need to give it a title. And then all you need to do is head onto this website here, Krix.com, K-R-I-K-Z-Z.com. Now, I've covered this website in previous EverDrive videos. These are basically the guys that make all the uh, EverDrive carts, the, the, you know, the place they originate from, really. So you need to select the cart that you're using for this video. It's going to be the Super EverDrive V2. So you click into there, and it tells you a few of the features about the cart as well. So maximum ROM size for games up to 7 megabytes is supported. Um, SRAM auto backup onto SD card, so save game positions can be saved onto the SD card. Uh, sports SD is up to 32 gigabytes, formatted as FAT16 or FAT32. And uh, Game Genie cheat codes are supported too, so if there's any bits of games that you're a bit stuck on and uh, want to cheat, that's quite simple to do with this as well. Now, if you click into the downloads area, there's actually quite a comprehensive user manual um, in here too. Uh, that gives you more um, technical stats about the cart and also talks you through the preparation needed for the cart to work. So you need to download the um, operating system, unarchive that into the folder of your SD card, uh, unzip your ROMs, and also says here it's not recommended to put a lot of files into a single folder as the cart will not display more than 1,024 files per folder. So that basically means, you know, it's a good idea to uh, split them up into letters so all your games under A go in one folder, you know, that kind of thing, keep them in separate directories. Um, I'll show you the file browser in action in a moment, but yeah, if you ever get stuck this uh, user manual here, it's pretty comprehensive. So all we need to do is click on OS Update. 
and that will take you into their file directory, uh, file download section. And we click on the SNES OS V1 zip file and download that to your machine. And then using your favorite unzip program of choice, all you need to do then is extract that into the root of your SD card. Now, I've already done this, but I won't do it again. And that is literally all you need to do to set it up. After that, you'll need some ROMs. Now, uh, you, knew, you probably know the way that uh, copyright law works with ROMs. Technically, you should have actually bought a copy of the original game back in the day to keep it legal. Um, and obviously, you know, we do not condone piracy here. However, if you want a good site to uh, get backups of your original ROMs, um, if it hadn't crashed, I recommend this website here, muparadise.me. Um, they've got a pretty comprehensive Super Nintendo uh, section here, um, and they're all sorted alphabetically. So uh, that's one good way to grab ROMs that you already own for your SD card, download a few of those, uh, make sure they're unzipped, and then we will hop over and uh, see how well this works on the SNES itself. Right, now here is my uh, British Super Nintendo. I know for uh, viewers in other countries it may look a little bit different to what you're used to, and it is actually called a Super Nintendo here. Before I get all the comments going, it's called a Super Famicom, which I'll generally do get on videos. Uh, so all we do is then literally put the um, Super EverDrive into the machine, give it a good push down, and then I'll take the SD card out of my little reader here, and we'll pop that in to the Super EverDrive, and it should just clip into place there. So, um, I've got this Super Nintendo hooked up to a 14-inch CRT monitor. Um, as if you watch my previous videos, you know that I'm quite an advocate of playing these old-school systems on a CRT. They look so much nicer than flat screens. So, uh, we'll try powering it on now and see what happens. So, there we go. Now, we get the, uh, the menu comes up here. And it lists um, a few of the ROMs that I've downloaded to uh, demonstrate on this video. And we can go up and down them by using the uh, standard controller. Um, for example, we will try, um, let's have a go at Street Fighter 2. Now to load the games, all you have to do is press the B button. Now that is important, you press B. If you press start on the control pad, it will load the last game that you played. That took me a bit of figuring out actually. So you press B and then press on load and start. Now what it's doing now is it's loading the ROM from the SD card and copying it to the cartridge's memory. So this takes a minute or so for it to do. Um, and then after that you can play it as if it was a standard cartridge. So at the moment it's copying those files over. As you can see it says write. And it's a good idea not to turn off the system at this point, otherwise you may uh, corrupt your memory. So there we go. After this point it's basically the same as playing the original cartridge. There we go, the legendary Street Fighter 2, the World Warrior. So as you can see from now on, it's basically just like playing the uh, original cartridge. Take that, you bitch. So if we reset the machine now, if I press a re button, uh, reboot button, it will then take us back to the menu. However, I can just press start again, it will take me back into um, Street Fighter. So that even works after you turn the system off. It stays resident in the cartridge's memory. Um, so we'll try a different game. Um, now I should mention this does not actually include the, uh, I think it was a Super FX chip that was actually included on a few cartridges. That means um, that there are a couple of games that used um, their own ROMs that will not actually work on this. The only one that I found and been quite disappointed in is uh, Mario Kart that won't actually work on this cartridge. So if that's a game that you're really desperate to play, then I'd recommend that you uh, buy the uh, higher end um, EverDrive cartridges that are available now. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in my video description, a bit more information as well. But for 99% of games that I've tried on this, um, and the ones that I kind of remember from back in the day, with the exception of Mario Kart, it's actually worked really well. And for the price, you know, 79 quid, um, you know, you'd have paid like, you know, that for two games, wouldn't you, back in the SNES's heyday? So here's another big favourite, Donkey Kong Country. Now this takes me back. 
And from the point the games have loaded into RAM, I mean, it is essentially, you know, it's playing it off the image on the card, so it is no different to playing it off a cartridge. You're not emulating or anything like that, you know, there's no lag or stutter or anything. It is literally every bit as good as playing it off the uh, original cartridge, so... The only hard bit I find is remembering how to play all these games after like 20 years. Has been a while. Hello, you. Oh. Whoa. So yeah, we could go on all day um, playing SNES games, but there you go. I mean, it's got a really simple menu that you can select your games from, and uh, you know, you've got to wait the 30 seconds while they transfer from the SD card into RAM. But apart from that, I mean, it's you know, every bit as good as playing the original games without all the massive expense of buying them off eBay. So there you go, guys. A quick look at the Super EverDrive. Now, I should put a little legal disclaimer here. Um, legally, you should have actually bought the games that you're going to be downloading onto this at least once in the past to uh, own a legal license for it. Uh, but the good thing about it is it does mean that you can play games that maybe are a bit hard to track down these days or, you know, maybe games that were released in different parts of the world that you never got a chance to play uh, back when you were younger. So I definitely recommend it. I mean, for the price that Retro Towers sell this for, I think it's seventy nine ninety nine. you can buy one of these for. And that essentially means you can own pretty much every SNES game that ever came out um, that's compatible with this card. So um, definitely worth a buy. The Super EverDrive, I'll leave a bit more information in the links in the video. There'll be a purchase now link for Retro Towers if you want to get it, a link to my blog. And uh, please do join us on Facebook as well, uh, facebook.com slash and my blog at kookytech.net. And I will see you in the next video.